Okay, Boker Tov. Uh, today's daf is daf Yudalid, and we pick up with the mission of the bottom of Yud Gimel. Um, and um, uh, and yeah, we turn from the prohibition of doing business, whether it's on the holiday or the market day, and the consequences of doing business, um, the fine that they would apply, that they would destroy the stuff that you got. Well, at least certainly on the market day. Not clear if that was true about the about the holiday as well. Um, and uh, you know the issues about deriving benefit, giving benefit, and now we really switch gears to a separate concern, which is uh, selling them things throughout the year that they might wind up using in their idolatrous practice. And uh, you know, for some, that was also part of the concern about doing business before their holidays, whether they would use the animals to sacrifice. You might remember that that was a way the Gemara framed the issue. Uh, but anyway, but here um, it's uh, um, it's much more general and it's much more explicit that that's the concern. This also became very relevant for the Rishonim, particularly the Ashkenazi Rishonim, who actually one of the major areas that they did business in was, yes, cri 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 <laughs> Christian religious items, selling them directly <laughs> even to the church. Okay, so with that in mind, let's take a look at this mission here at the bottom of Yud Gimel Amud Bet. Um, so, uh, the following things are prohibited, prohibited to sell to an idolater. It's Stroblin, it's Stroblin, which we'll see what that means in the Gemara. I always make it think that always makes me think of like a strobe lighting or something. Anyway, it's Stroblin, but it's not what it is. It's some type of a plant or whatever, some types of a things that they would use to de decorate in front of, you know, string is decorations in front of their idol. Okay, which um, again, the also question is that what type of Isser are they doing? It doesn't, it's not going to seem like from the Gemara that they're using this as a form of an offering, as an act of a Vodasara per se. You know, it's some type of a of a participation in their pagan ritual, but that doesn't mean it's an act of worship, right? Maybe it's an act of adorning their idol. Um, you know, for a Jew, that wouldn't be a Vodasara, that would be the death penalty, that might be a lav, right? So anyway, it's interesting also what type of thing are you indirectly participating or are you enabling? Anyway, and, and this is at any time of the year. At any time of the year. And this is these the, are classic things that would be used in this type and do, of worship. And do they have not do they not have any other use? No, uh, like, well, say, we'll see about that. Okay, but these are th they certainly have they might have another use, but they are certainly primary. like a primary use or whatever. And that's a key question. So hold off on that. But yes, it's good that you're asking that. No shuach, another type of things that Mar will say that that's like a white fig. Uptot rot, their stems. Okay, well, the Gemara will say that that means that you can't sell these things with their stems attached because that would let them string them up by their stems. So they would be mocked to get them. So you can sell them with alpers, Presumably. Ulavona and frankincense. Okay, that's actually an act of like a type of a uh, worship, you know, burning frankincense. Um, the Tarnagol Halavan and a white chicken, mm. which presumably would also be used as an actual act of an or something that would be brought as an offering, presumably. Oh, totally was. Red, what? Totally Red, was. White chickens, you know, yeah. for a fact? Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, uh, I remember this. This was back when I was in Colombia when I took yeah. a course in demonology, magic, and miracles. And uh, our same, you know, Machloket about Kaparot, right. they had that exact, exact yeah. Machloket okay, for, uh, for an eclipse. Like, what do you do when uh, oh. when there's an eclipse? You know, you, you, it, you know the, All right, anyway, yes. Yeah. So, so they would use it, so they'd use it for like these rituals, you know. Like, White but, chickens. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a question. Like, let's say you're a pregnant woman. What kind do you take? Like, there you same go. Okay, but the good interesting question again is, is it some type of a ritual or is it some type of an actual offering like is it you know brought as a sacrifice so that's an interesting question what exactly are they doing with it that makes um then are they technically transgressing the b'nai noach prohibition of of avodah zara right if they do pagan rituals are they transgressing the b'nai noach prohibition of avodah zara so i think it's an interesting question what exactly they're doing with it okay um and Rabbi Yehuda, Omer, now Rabbi Yehuda would say, um, You know, if you don't know that they're specifically uh, focused on that, maybe they just want to have some, you know, chicken soup at home, so that's okay. So how do you know? Well, if they specifically ask or, or select the white chicken, that's a problem. But if they buy a, a, a crate full of chickens and there's a white one, you don't have to take it out. Um, okay. It reminds me of like the fish, you know, like a non-kosher fish. Right. Right. But if you're selling him just the, the white chicken itself, so cut, cut off the finger, because you know, but they know if don't offer up sacrifices that are let, met, missing a limb, presumably, or and pagans don't also. Okay, and then you can sell to them. They don't offer it up with a missing limb to their uh, pagan god. Um, again, that sounds certainly by the chicken case, it's a concern about directly actually offering it up as a sacrifice.
sacrifice. Um, mentioning eclipses, by the way, I should mention to everybody, my son told me that apparently Wednesday morning there's going to be this uh, blood, blood moon. red moon or something. Just to be aware, 6 a.m. Anyway, Vishar Kol HaDvarim, <laughs> just an opportunity to see Masa Hashem. Vishar Kol HaDvarim, Staman Mutar Perushanas, or other things, if they're just buying them generically, it's fine. But if they say explicit, oh, it's my holiday, can you sell me a palm branch and a, no, that's a different holiday. <laughs> I was making a joke. And a, uh, what are they, a citron? Oh, anyway, if they say specifically, like, you know, I always find it so funny, you're out there on the street buying the Esrog and love him and these uh, non-Jews are walking by, they're trying to figure out what's so special about these things. So anyway, so if they come by and they make it clear that they want this for some type of a pagan ritual, you know, and how clear do they have to be, that makes it forbidden, okay? And if the class, you even can't sell them. Literally, this means some a good palm tree and chatzav, some type of a grass, it sounds like, and some other thing you can't sell. Anyway, we'll have to figure out what all these words mean. Okay, so let's take a look at the Gemara. Top of Yudal Ambalas. My Yitzroblin. What is this Yitzroblin? Trinisa. It's Trinisa, which Rashi says means a cedar tree, although Tosu says it actually means some type of a mineral. Raminu, um, I'll ask you on this. Hosifu alein alachsin the itstroblin muchsasin ubnochua. They added to the things to which Shmita would apply these four things. Alachsin, I have no idea. Itstroblin is what we're talking about. Muchsasin, I also don't know. And bnochua, which we'll see, which was also mentioned in our Mishnah, which were these types of white figs. So why these were not initially included in in Shmita, what you can tell me what they mean if they have do they have a translation or not? Anyway, you can look what type of tree the freaking fruits, yeah. One. I never, never heard of it. It's called an ilex. It doesn't. Okay, now we know. Okay, yeah. let's move on. Okay, anyway, so uh, so the reason that these were added to Shemitah, why weren't they initially on the list of Shemitah? Uh, it could be that they were not considered to be like, um, you know, um, uh, uh, things that Tosas has a whole discussion why they might not have exactly been on the list. Some of them might be because it was not clear exactly which year they grew. They grew over a period of years, and maybe technically they didn't exactly fall out during the Shemitah year. Another possible explanation is, is that they were considered to be like something that were not really edible. Okay, not exactly clear why they were not initially on the list. But anyway, the Isakadaitich, it's struggling Trinisa. Now, if you think it's struggling, is this Trinisa, which uh, let's go with Tosis' explanation, is some type of a mineral. So Trinisa Misa Vishvias. You don't have Shemitah applying to a mineral. Shemitah only applies to something that grows. That time we turn on the rice that that called this the principle. If something basically, you know, is has roots in the ground and grows from the ground that has Shemitah. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And for Tosos, that means that something like this is some mineral, um, does not have Shemitah applying to it. So therefore, clearly, it is not a mineral if it's in the list of things that Shemitah applies. So the Gemara says, Ela Amar Rav Safra, Peri Darza, fine. It is fruit from a cedar tree, some type of a thing, which, again, maybe was a question about if Shemitah applied because Tosos says, either because, uh, because of, let's say, it wasn't, initial, it wasn't really questionable whether it was edible or not, but in the end, they decided Shemitah did apply. This fruit of the of this cedar tree, some type of a thing. Rashi says the fruit of cedar trees. Rashi says gallnut. If you look at Rashi, so not really an edible thing, but some type of a thing again that they would use to bedeck the avodah zara. Um, and maybe uh, for whatever reason, they eventually included it in the shemitah list. You have something to add about this? Uh, these are names. Yeah, no, actually, it's a very interesting note here. From yeah, Steinzels about the Strobelin. So he says that it's. Uh, it can refer to a variety of rounded objects, including the cones, a particular type of tree. Which oh, very, cones. Yeah, which was, you know, which was, he said, very common for Asclepius, the god of medicine. They actually have these statues with him holding the staff with a pine cone. On oh, top. cool. That's pretty so, cool. Okay, yeah. so pine cones, that makes sense also why it wasn't initially in the Shemitah list. doesn't explain why it eventually was in the Shemitah list. Pine cones are completely inedible. But you can certainly understand, like, pine cones are big and, you know, visible, whatever. They're very nice, also symmetrical, right? So you can understand that they use them in some type of a hanging ritual. Oh, that's a nice explanation, pine cones. Okay, now, Benog Shuach, what about Shuach? I'm a rabbi, Barbarchan, I'm a rabbi, Yochanan, Te'enei Chivrasa, a white figs. Um, and again, this was something that maybe weren't so edible. Long tosos. Whenever Benoit appears in the Gemara, there's these huge tosos in, because some Gemaras make them sound like they weren't particularly edible and didn't taste good, and other Gemaras make them sound like they were a delicacy. So tosos tries to figure out, are there different types of Benoit Shuach? Anyway, so these were things that, A, they were both added later to the Shemitah list, so maybe they weren't really edible. But regardless, and maybe that's also going back to Michael's question, why you have to assume that they're being used for an Avodah Zara. Because if they're not edible, why else does people, do people buy them? Maybe the primary 
reason people are buying them is for these Abodazara things. And they were used, presumably, to string in front of the Abodazara. How do we know that? From the next line, because it says, two throats, which are their stems. We don't mean it's forbidden to buy stems, sell stems. We mean that you can't sell them with their stems. And Rashi says, why not? So if you look at the first Rashi, first narrow line, it's not a separate type of thing to sell them. Don't sell them with their stems. They would string it before the Oda Zara, but then Rashi adds three words to address the question I was raising. So what is it? It's just a ritual? It's just beautifying an Avodah Zara? Since when is beautifying an Avodah Zara the actual prohibition of worshipping Avodah Zara? So Rashi says, the key word in Rashi is Darkan Udan Bekach. Yes, for that particular Avodah Zara, this was considered an act of worshipping, not just a ritual, but an act of worshipping by stringing these things in front of it. Okay, so that becomes this important question, right? Is it that you can't sell them ritual objects or you can't sell them objects that they use in an actual act of worship? And Rashi is saying that in the end, he's right, framing this as a type of an act of worship. Back to the language, and there's another yes. ha'ara here. So the, uh, the, uh, the, well, both, the aloxin, so, you know, keeping with the uh, pine cone thing, this would be acorns, he says. Okay. And then, uh, but, you know, oftentimes, yeah, we have this, like, fake thing. So, anyway, all these things, you know, fertility rights. So, we use, like, Dionysus and those kinds of things. Oh, interesting. Yes. Although, the, that list of aloxin or whatever was for Shemitah, but yeah. Beno Shuach and the pine cones, that's interesting, fertility rights. Okay. Yeah, yeah the acorns are yeah. Very interesting. Livona, <laughs> frankincense. Okay, that we can certainly understand as an act of, as a ritual, not just ritually, something that was brought as an object of worship, to or an object to be offered, I should say, an offering. Livona. I'm going to be like I'm going to Livona Zaka. Pure, in frankincense. Tana. Okay. Mokulan Mokhinlan Chavila. But you can sell them in bulk. You can sell them in a, what's it called? A pallet. So it's called a pallet, like a big thing. Oh, yeah. you, you know, anyway, you could sell like a big bundle of them. You could sell it in bulk, because then you're just selling it to a wholesaler. He's not actually going to use it. He's just going to retail it then. Or you're the wholesaler. You're going to sell it to a guy who's going to then, but then the people are going to buy from him. Kamar is going to ask that question. Okay. So it says, How big is a chavila? Three manim. So that's a very large size. I don't know exactly how much it is. I don't know. We'll call it 20 pounds. I just made it up. Okay. Okay. But then he's going to go, so fine. You're not selling it to a guy who's going to use it. You're selling it to a guy who's then going to retail it, or whatever, you know, distribute it. And then the people that are going to buy it from him are going to use it. So the Gemara says, Amar Abai, very important principle. One line here, very important in the parameters of leaf name Iver. Amar Abaye, a leaf name mefaktinan, a leaf name de leaf de lo mefaktinan. We are prohib, we are, we are for, forbidden on the prohibition of leaf name Iver. Do not put a stumbling block before the blind. We are not prohibited on, do not put a stumbling block before, like, you know, do not do one step removed. Do not put a stumbling block in front of somebody that his stumbling block is that he'll put a stumbling block before somebody else, you know? <laughs> so don't, don't do it two steps removed, one step. Yes, is that true? Eventually what's going to do, you do not directly participate in the final person's sin. You're one degree removed, and therefore you do not, you're not transgressed. Now, here's a, a fun question that the Achronim asks. The middle person here, there are two non-Jews in the equation. I sell to a non-Jew, non-Jew sells to whatever. And we're, presumably non-Jews are not prohibited with leaf naiver, right? A non-Jew is not prohibited in the Shev Mitzvah to cause another non-Jew to sin or to, like, you know, to participate in the sin. So can I sell, however, to Michael this big pallet of Livona if Michael is going to go now to the non-Jewish neighborhood and sell it to them? So I am not transgressing the leaf naiver of their sin because I'm two degrees removed. But you know which Lisa Naive I might be transgressing? Me. I'm transgressing making him being over on Lisa Naive. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea that a double leaf nate two degrees removed is not a problem is when they're both non-Jews, okay? Because I'm not because because the non-Jew won't the, the non-Jew I'm interacting with won't transgress leaf nate either because he's not prohibited against leaf nate either. And the non-Jew who will transgress, I'm not directly participating in his sin. But if it's a, a selling it to a Jew who will then be over on leaf nate either by selling to non-Jew, that could be a different story, okay? But anyway, that's a very important principle that your leaf nate either is only one degree removed, not two degrees removed. Okay, the Tarnagol Lavan, a white, uh, a white chicken. Um, is it is a Tarnagol a chicken or a rooster? It's a rooster, right? The Tarnagol, a rooster, a white rooster, a white rooster. Okay, 
Um, I'm Rabbi Yonah, I'm Rabbi Zera, I'm Rabbi, I'm Rabbi Zeev. Iga the Masi, I'm Rabbi Yonah, I'm Rabbi Zera, I'm Rabbi Zera. Tarnagola me, mutter lim kor lo, tarnagola vana. Guys going around and say, who has a rooster? I need a rooster. Any roosters, anyone? Then you can sell him a white rooster, because he's not particularly looking for a white rooster. Tarnagola love on me. Guys going around saying, anybody got white roosters? So then, usher lim kor lo, tarnagola vana. You can. All right, so that's pretty clear, right? If the person is generically looking for a rooster, it's okay. You don't have to be concerned that the white rooster might be used for a particular thing. It's only if he's specifically looking for a white rooster is it a problem. Now, let's see how that fits in our Mishnah, because in our Mishnah, we have what seems to be some middle case. It's not. It's not our Mishnah. Rabbi Hudo Mer. Mocher hulo tarnagol, avan beno tarnagol. You can sell him a white rooster amongst other roosters. Hey, Chidami, what's the case? Ilim et kamar, tarnagol, lovan lumi. Hey, who's got a white rooster? Then tarnagol, lovan lumi. So now, filo beno tarnagol, namiglo. So why would Rabbi Hudo allow you to sell him a white rooster mixed up with other roosters? He's clearly looking for a white rooster. You know, why does it all of a sudden become butcher? Because I say, well, I'll sell you the white rooster if you buy two other black roosters with it. Big deal. We know he's interested in a white rooster. So that can't be the case that Rabbi Yudah and the Chachamim are disagreeing with. El Alav, it must be, the Kamar Tarnagolami, Tarnagolami. He's going around saying, who has a white rooster? Who, who has a rooster? And then Rabbi Yudah says, oh, in that case, where he's generically looking, you can sell it to him, mixed, a white rooster mixed up with other things. Okay. So, but then that, but the, if, and the Chachamim would forbid even that. In that case, so even in the case where he's generically looking, the most lenient position would be Reb Yehuda, who lets you sell it mixed up with the other roosters. But for the Tanakama, you couldn't even sell it mixed up. So, so what's going on? The Mishnah is clearly, you said that two extremes, explicitly looking for white roosters, also generic is mutter. Okay, but our case in the Mishnah can't be that he's explicitly looking. It must be generic. And it seems that in the case of generic, there's actually much more limited permission. Even Rabbi Yudah only allows it in a very narrow circumstance. So where's your case that general generic is okay for everybody? Then what's the case of the Mishnah? So the Gemara says, um, Amr of Nagam Yitzhak, so Kachab Mayaskinam, what are you talking about? Kamar, Kagod Amr Zevzeh. The case of the Mishnah is he said this and this. Now, um, Rashi says what that means is somebody is saying, I'm, I, the guy's going around saying, I need white, black, and red roosters. Anybody selling white, black, and red roosters? Okay, and in that case, that's where the Chachamim say you can't sell him a white one because he explicitly mentioned a white. And Rabbi Yehuda said you can sell it to him with all the rest because since he's asking for a couple of different types, you can assume he's not specifically interested for our vote as our purposes. Tosfos, I'm going to put Rashi aside. Rashi says it's exactly that he's sort of mentioning different colors. Tosfos is a better explanation, I think, especially as the... Me, and and between that, all he's not getting all colors? What? And you are, whatever, according to Rabbi Yehuda, you're arguing him or you're giving him a no, variety. No, you're not asking. If you ask him for all colors, then he's asking for nothing. Right, right. Mm-hmm. then that goes back to the generic case. Okay, Tosos is a better read, I, both of the language of the Gemara here and the, as the way the Gemara continues. Tosos says, no, no, no. It's not that he's saying, I need white, black, and red roosters. He goes he, he goes to Michael here, and Michael's got these roosters, and he's, Michael's looking around, and he's saying, I'll take that one, and that one, and that one. Okay, which makes a lot of sense. And one of them is white. So that's an interesting question. You know, and the other two aren't white. So he... The but fact that he's asking, white, right? well, yeah, he, he pointed to three, and one of them is white and the other aren't. Oh, so that's interesting. How do we look at that? Do we say he's white when he probably wants for a vote of Zara? And maybe he's even just saying the others as a right. way of letting the Jews he's sell it to him. Maybe or, or, nice or do we say that because he's picking those out, he, has no, he, he doesn't care about color, he, he's just looking for the nice ones, right? So that's the debate. And there the Chachamim say, since he specifically pointed to the white one, even though he pointed to others, you can't sell him anything. And if you said, no, you can sell it to him with all of them together, we're going to assume that it's, he does, he's not particularly interested in white. So that allows this statement not to work. If he specifically says, I'm looking for a white one, everybody says that. If he just generically says, hey, I need two roosters, so, and you want to pick out the white one and tell him the right one, be my guest. But if he specifically says this, this, and this, that's where they're debating, can you sell him the white one among the others? That's a great explanation. Okay. <clears throat> yes. Question back to RBA and the wholesaler. If you, if you are, uh, are aware that you're an accessory to it, yeah. is there any question, is there any pushback to this uh, um, Abaye's uh, statement? or the, the Abaye's statement that you could do two degrees removed? Yeah. yeah no, no, that's actually the, we, how we rule the halacha. We, but if the wholesaler is Jewish, then that's a, that, that could be a problem. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Cases, yeah, even yeah that's the way, you're aware of it. Yeah, that's okay. the way we rule. Okay, now, Marcel's like this. Okay, Kodamar Zevazet. Tiny Namiyaku, we talked similarly. I'm going to have you to aim a time. 
when is it that you're not allowed to sell him a white rooster? Bisman Omar, Tarnagol Zelavan. He comes up and says, that's the one I want. And the one he's pointing to is a white one. Avali Mamar, Zev, this one and this one. And one of them is a white one. Mutter, then you can sell them both. Okay, the Chachamim would say no. Great read of Tosos. Even if he says, I want this one, and it happens to be a white one, if you know the particular context, and you know it's not in a Vodazar context, you're fine. Even if he says this one, and it happens to be white, but if it's an Ovi Chachom Shasa Mishta no. If you know that he's doing, he, he has a big party that day that he's making for his son, okay? Oh, Or you see, even the even the non-Jews knew about the magic of chicken soup, okay? Except they were making booster soup. Anyway, <laughs> or you know that he's doing, buying this stuff because he's got a sick person and he's trying to buy it for the food. Mutar, and maybe, I don't know, maybe they thought white roosters were special curative you know, properties, but that didn't make it Avodah Zara. In that case, it's Mutter. So if the context is clear and, you know, the context isn't explicit, the guy could have a sick son at home or making a party and do, being, bringing a, a thing to their God. Maybe it's after they bring a thing to their God to pray for their for their sick person. But so it's interesting, like how, what's, how much do you have to be certain X or possible Y, you know, exactly how you assess it. But anyway, but at least here, what Yud is saying is, is that there's a reasonable context that he's doing it for another purpose. It's permissible this is within Reb Yehuda, remember. Reb Yehuda is more lenient in terms of what circumstances he thinks it's okay to sell. Okay? Um, now, the Gemara says like this. Um, um, the Gemara says, like, uh, mutar. So the Gemara says, really? Is it mutar? If the guy's making a, a party for his son, party for his son presumably means, normally when we say Mishel Ibn, it means he's marrying off his son. But the Gemara is saying, one minute. When a guy marries off his son, there's usually an Avodah Zarah ritual that takes place because that was actually one of the days you're not allowed to do business with them. He's making a you know party for his son. Um, um, you only can't do business with that person on that day. So but that person is forbidden. There's some avodas are context there. Okay, betavzi. We're talking about a tavzi, which Rashi says, I don't know what the heck that word means. But Rashi says basically it means like some other party that's just for having fun and it's not about, yeah, like about a, a picnic. wedding. A picnic? Yeah. Fascinating. Okay. He's yeah. making a picnic. Yeah, uh, not a formal meal. I got it. Yeah. I got it. It's not a wedding feast, primarily. A middle Iranian word. Middle Iranian word. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's not. The shark all the stomach and photo time. Now we're going to still go back and try to prove this idea that when you're explicit, it's always uster. When you're generic, it's always mutter. The debate of Rabbi Yudha is when you say zev is zev. Let's see how that works with the rest of the Mishnah. It's not. The Mishnah says, Vishar stama mutter perusha nasser. All the other things is that are not this white, you know, rooster and the frankincense and so on. If you're if you're just generic, it's permissible. If you're explicit, it's forbidden. My stomach and my perusha, and what's generic and what's explicit? Ilima stama the kamar chite chivrasa. So now we're going to just use sort of parallel to the white rooster. We're going to sort of imagine that it's something that's not a rooster. It's, I don't know, wheat. White wheat, okay, not that they necessarily knew that the people would use white wheat in a ritual. It's just like wheat is now standing in for the place of rooster. So white roosters we knew were used in this Avodazara, you know, offering. Other things, they're asking for something bizarre, so they're being specific, but they're being specific without it being clear about Avodazara. So instead of saying white rooster, they said white wheat, okay, and Perushan, so that would be stam that they were just saying something bizarre, but not explicit that it's Avodah Zara, white wheat, Uperushan, and being explicit is the Kamerel Avodah Kochavim. I need white wheat for my uh, Avodah Zara ritual. So if that's true, that, if that's the case where the Mishnah is saying, well, if it's not the particular items mentioned, then if they're just generic, means generic meaning that they're asking for weird stuff, but not spelling out why, it's okay. But if they're explicit that they need it for their Avodah Zara ritual, it's no good. If that's what the Mishnah means to draw the line between totally explicit and not, so why do you need the Mishnah to teach me this? It's obvious if the guy, you don't have to tell me that, they, that it's permissible to sell them white wheat. Like, why would I think I couldn't sell them white wheat? It's bizarre, but I don't know any particular problematic context. And you wouldn't not, and you wouldn't have to tell me that I'm not allowed to sell it to them when they explicitly say they're doing it for Avodah Zara. Both of those points are obvious. Okay, so Ella, it must be that the line is drawn elsewhere in the Mishnah. Stamon de Kamarchiti, Perushin de Kamarchivarta. Stam is that when they say wheat, 
You're allowed to sell them stam wheat, which, okay, obviously, if they're just saying, can you sell me wheat, that's obvious. But the chiddush is that when they're explicit, meaning the question is, what does explicit mean? Let's just focus on that. If explicit means they explicitly say, I need this for my avodas or ritual, then of course you can't sell it to them. So if the mission is a chiddush, it means when they're explicit, meaning when they're being highly particular and asking for something bizarre, but they're not explicit that it's for avodas zara. Okay, I need white wheat of this type, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so in that type of a case, we're going to say, ah, it's so bizarre, they probably need it for a bodhisattva. Maybe that's the case what the mission is saying. If that's true, we see, says the Gemara, so michlal, so if that's true, that the case when it's not a chick, when it's not a rooster, <clears throat> being particular and being forbidden is, does not mean saying explicitly a bodhisattva. It means being particular in the sense of, you know, being very specific. Okay, Michlal, from that we can infer to Tarnago that when it comes to the rooster, a few stamanamilo, that even if they're not specific, even if they're just generically asking for a rooster, you can't sell them a white one. Okay, so do you got that? It's a little confusing, but basically, I keep on losing my whatever. <laughs> when in doubt, use your hand. Okay, so anyway, you have the idea like this you have. Rooster, that's one case. Who's selling a rooster, right? And then who's selling a white rooster, right? Those are the two cases. And we said that this is always much or this is always usser. And the middle case was like a zev is that type of a case, okay? But it's fine. That's the middle case. But anyway, but the initial statement was this is always much or this is always usser, all right? But now the Nishna says when you're not dealing with a rooster, okay, then staman is mutter and pirushan is usser. All right, so if stomach is if perushan is also it, it by a not rooster when you're dealing with wheat, okay, you have three cases wheat, white wheat, and right, white wheat for a vodazara, white wheat for a vodazara. So it says, so which explicit case here, this obviously is not explicit, which explicit case here is forbidden? It says, if it's, when the mission says explicit is forbidden, it means this, then that's patently obvious. Can't, that can't be. So when it says explicit is forbidden, it must mean something like specific, but not really, really explicit. That's forbidden. So if that's forbidden by the wheat, then the case that's forbidden by the rooster must just be the stam rooster. And even if somebody is just generically looking for a rooster, you can't sell them a white rooster. Because the mission says the roosters are particularly problematic, white roosters are particularly problematic. Everything else is only a problem when it's explicit. I Meaning, the way say that everything else has to be explicit. So if everything else has to be explicit, and that means this, then the rooster case doesn't have to be explicit. Even if the person is just generically asking for a rooster, it should be forbidden to sell them a white rooster. So that shows against the idea that a generic rooster is okay. So the Gemara says, um, No, 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 no. When stam, not explicit, means he's just saying white meat. And it, when it, it's explicit by things other than a rooster, it means he's really explicitly saying for avodah but you, and yes, there is a chiddush. What's the chiddush? Obviously, if he says, I'm using this for our Zara, obviously it's us, sir. So no, I might have thought, hi, Gavran, lovely, what is called Chavim Kabai. He really, maybe you can even sell him white wheat, even though he says for our Zara. Why? Because maybe he doesn't really need it for our Zara. So if he doesn't need it for our Zara, why is he saying that? So, because you know what? This guy is like Meshuggah after his Avodah Zara. The Savar, he's really cleaves to his Avodah Zara. And this person thinks this is such a brilliant psychological read. Right? You think that because you have this obsession and you're crazy about something, like think about somebody, I don't know, like, you know, my kids are like totally obsessed about like, you know, D&D or whatever, you know, people that got these obsessions. So they assume everybody always wants to talk about it, right? So you think that because you're crazy cleaving to this, actually, I shouldn't say that about the kids. That's what I should Right. They know they only talk about their friends who are with their friends who are crazy about it. <laughs> okay, but anyway, but you know, if somebody has an obsession, they always want, they assume everybody's interested in their obsession. Okay, he seems the same way, he is like so cleaving to it. Everybody also is crazy about his Avodah Zara. And Amahachi, so he figures, I'll tell the storekeeper, I'm going to be using this for my Avodah Zara ritual. He'll probably give me a discount because everybody loves, you know, Zeus. Everybody's crazy about Zeus. So, uh, so he says, They'll give it to me the next time. Kamash Milan, that we don't attribute it to that. If the guy explicitly says Avodah Zara, it's Avodah Zara. 
So anyway, what we're saying is, is that this is permissible to even sell him a white rooster if he's generically asking. This is forbidden. In something that's not a rooster, even this is permissible, even if he's specific, it's only a problem if he explicitly labels and he sells you black and white, he's going to use it for a bodhisattva, okay? But anyway, that's the basic, that's the basic division, that certain things you know are being used for a bodhisattva purposes, what is no, is it 100%? But anyway, but certain things that you know, when they specifically identify the type of thing that you know, like they say, white rooster, that is a problem. Zev is that becomes an interesting question. Things that you don't know are used for that purpose, it's only a problem when they explicitly Explicitly, like label it and identify it as such. Yes. Is there a concern about danger here that you know you you know that the non the idolater sees you selling it to a Jew and then he says you sold it to him you won't sell it to me and anger and oh you know oh. that's I mean yes that's a good point that we should him definitely deal with concerns about Ava and other types of things but if there's no good way of getting out of it then you have to you know then yes those were factors that definitely played in in the Middle Ages 100 percent I actually in a minute want to read Tosos because Tosos is going to connect this to the Ashkenazi trade and church ritual <laughs> objects we'll see you in a minute yes. I, it feels like there's a case that would be a good like case study for it, which is like you have five roosters and the white roost like the white rooster is the worst of the bunch. Like it's, ah. not, it's not. So he's like, yeah, I want it from like you know the chicken soup, and you like, right. That, that doesn't make any sense. Right, 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 right. right. How much do you use other contextual like, clues? White was the worst meat, right, 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 right. Absolutely, right. How much do you use other contextual clues? Like even if something otherwise wouldn't be a problem because of this structure that we set up, but there are things that are sort of the reverse, as opposed to signaling you the same way when he says a white rooster, like this one or whatever it is, but you you, re you have reason to, th you know, good reason to think he's not using it for a Vodazara. Let's say it's the flip. It doesn't, it, technically it should be okay, but there's reason to think to be suspicious in the other way. Yeah, look, that's the general issue we're going to be dealing with here for a couple of, for a while in terms of, I mean, actually we leave this and then we come back to it. And there's like a uh, leaf day ever is a recurring theme and trying to figure out exactly what the parameters are. So we'll we'll be revisiting it. Okay, let's do a little bit. I want to get further and I want to see a toast rose. So it says like this. It says, um, okay, and talking about this, actually, Jenna, this is similar to your case, um, except it's like in the opposite to make it permissible. Jenna was asking using context clues to make it forbidden. Let's take a look. Um, uh, by Ravashi, Ravashi asked, Tarnago love and katuelami. I need a white. A rooster with a broken leg. Okay, so so which is bizarre. First of all, who what Dafka wants something with a broken leg? Maybe he's saying I'm looking for a damage. I'm trying to get a twenty percent discount. But remember, a broken leg means that, or a chopped up uh, finger means that they won't use it for a vodazara. Okay, so should and then and you don't have one with a broken finger with a chopped off finger, but you do have a whole white rooster. Can you sell it to him? Mm -hmm. Can you say, since he was only asking for one with a, broke, with, with a chopped off finger, presumably he doesn't use it for a Vodazara. Or maybe he's a little too smart for me. <laughs> maybe he realizes it's easier to get a whole white rooster than a broken white rooster, and he was exactly hoping for this scenario. Okay? So, Tarnago, so if he says like this, Tarnago love and katu alami, mahu linko lo tarnago love and shalem, can you then sell him a whole uh, rooster, white rooster? Mi amina mi de kamer katu alav lo vodos kochon kaboy, since he's saying I want one with a chopped off uh, finger, so he's not using it for a vodosara. Oh, deal, ma iru me kamare, or maybe he's just being scheming. You know, and he figures out, like, okay, it's much more, I'll say this, they'll think I don't need it for a Vodazara, and it's and they'll probably offer me a whole one. So, in Team Saloma, how you room to come out, and if you say, no, that case, clearly he, we have to be concerned that he's scheming. Okay, in that case, let's say he says, turn and go love on me, turn and go love on me. He goes around saying, I need a white rooster. But he relays shachor. And they say, the guy says to him, I don't have any white roosters, I got a black one. He says, that's fine, and he buys that. And then he keeps on going. Any more, anybody else? Okay, and then Edo and Vishako, and they gave they, they, a, a red one and he takes it. So, I'm sorry, Vishako, Aviavile Edo and Vishako, Maulim Kalalavan, and then he's still looking. Can you then be the one to sell him the white one? Mia meaning even the Avi, Shako, Vishako, Edo, Vishako, Lava, or Kocham Kabai, since he's taking red and black, whatever, he might want white because it looks nice. You know, he might want red, but he's not specifically focused. He's happy to take other ones as well. He still wants a white one, though. So, do we say that that is enough of an indication he's not looking at it for our vote, Zara? Oh, the Omai Rumi Kamare, or even here. He's good. He figures I'll keep on buying the roosters until somebody finally sells me a white one. Come on, uh, so take you, so we don't know. So we don't know in that case, is that enough of a signal that even though he's asking for white, he doesn't really need it for our Vodazara. So, right, so if you have cases where it would be problematic, we use possible context clues to say it's not for our Vodazara, and Denon wants to argue it should also be Machmir in the opposite direction when it's appropriate, and the answer is probably correct. Let's finish to the mission, and then I want to read the Tosvos. 
Rav Meir Omer Af Dekel Tov. We can't even sell them this Dekel Tov, this good palm tree. Um, we have a tra- we, we have a tradition that we have a we have a tradition that Avodas Kochan and Avram Avinu are Rameir Pirkei Havi. Avram Avinu had a, had a Maseches of Odazara, and it had four hundred chapters in it. Okay, it was a really big Maseches of Gemara. It took him a whole year to get through it, even doing the Daf Yomi. So anyway, so and now he did a chapter a year. Anyway, the point of saying that four hundred chapters, obviously four hundred is like saying a thousand, a million. It's like saying that there was so much idolatry in Avram Avinu's day that he needed, like, if, if he would have had a tractate of Avodah Zorah, it would have had to have hundreds of chapters in it, okay, to deal with all of the details of all of the idolatry, okay? Um, uh, okay. The Anan Chamishit now, we have a mere five chapters in our tractate, and we don't can't even understand the, the reality of what it's describing. Okay, we so you know we're we're we're, we're so oblivious to the real details of the practices that are surrounding us. So Umaykash, what is it that he's sort of making this you know sort of uh, a, a statement about? What is he getting? What is he getting exasperated about or frustrated about? Umaykasha, Tiktani Reb Meir Omer Aftekel Tav Chatzav Niklas Asrolim Parlov Tikochavim. You can't sell them these strings. Dekel tav chatzav in class. So dekel tav udulam is dab mizavnina. She says, I don't understand this. What? You can't sell them a good palm tree? Hi dekel dish mizavnina. You can sell them a bad palm tree? That's not. Ain mochim lehem b'mukhubar l'karka. But we taught that you can't sell them anything attached to the ground. And that has to do with, like, as we said, that's funny. That has less to do with sort of pagan ritual. And that has to do with the fact that, like, you know, giving them a, more of a presence in the land of Israel. So that's specifically about land in the land of Israel. So anyway, so it's, it's funny because you would expect and that's going to come up and it's like two lines in the Gemara that it's a frustration of we don't really understand the specifics of the pagan rituals. We don't understand why specifically these items, what they were used for. That's what he was saying. Here it's just a normal question. What does it have to do with Avraham Avinu's Maseches Avodah Zarah? It's like, I don't get why this is a pro- why only this is a problem. It should be that all things that are attached to the ground are a problem. Like, okay. I mean, I hear the question, but like, what does it have to do with comparing it to Avraham Avinu, you know? Anyway, um, I'm gonna lay, um, no, my dekel tav, peros dekel tav. It doesn't mean you can't actually sell a, a palm tree. It means you can't sell the fruit of a palm tree. Now, does good, is good here a descriptor, a good palm tree? Or many we trying to assume it means like it's a type of a species of palm tree. You can't sell the fruit from a particular species of palm tree. So maybe that's his point. If we understood the pagan practices better, I would have immediately understood that that was the context. That when it tells, don't sell them a deck of tav, it didn't mean the palm tree itself. It meant don't sell them the fruit of this particular type of a palm tree. Fine. Now what's chatzav? Kispa. That's kispa, whatever that is. Rashi says it's maybe some type of a grass. Um, now, Nicholas, what's Nicholas? Saint, Saint Nicholas, there you go. He also wrote to me, I'm Bar Yosef, Kuraiti. It's Kuraiti. Um, again, exactly what this is. Some say it's like some type of a of, 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 of a date or something. Anyway, I'm only a Bailu Rabdimi. Okay, let's for let's first finish, then you'll read the note. Yeah. I'm really a uh, by a by the Tanan Nicholas, Vlo Yadin and Mahu. The mission says Nicholas, and I don't know what it is. That's how much Kuraiti, and you said to me, Oh, it's Kuraiti. What is the good of that give me? Vlo Yadin and Maya Hanislan. I don't know how you're helping me. You translated one word I don't know into another word I don't know. Shkaya, what good does that do me? So that's how I feel sometimes. I think of my is trying to tell us what certain things mean. So I'm really no ahanai, I help you, the azas hosam when you Go there, like there's Israel, uh, Martelu, Nicholas, and you tell the people, hey, what's Nicholas? Below Yadia, and they don't know. Martelu, then you can say Kuraiti. How about Kuraiti? Do you know what Kuraiti is? The Yadia, and they say, oh, Kuraiti, I know that. And then they'll show it to you. So if I gave you another word, it might help you identify it. Now you have two words that you can use to ask around it to identify it. Okay, what is that? What are your footnotes? What do your notes say? This is a type of fruit of superior species of day. Was named after philosopher Nicholas. Oh, it is Nicholas. Yeah, who used to send these dates from Syria to Augustus Caesar in Rome. Okay, <laughs> there you go. Nicholas dates. There is another reading, by the way. Okay. Rabbi may have uh, Nicolivam um, instead of. Uh, okay. All right, very good. Anyway, so the basic upshot of this is. Don't sell them things that they are explicitly labeling for Hodazara, but things that you know are classically used for that purpose, you know, and they're, you know, and they're specifically identifying, they don't say for Hodazara, but the type of thing that they, that you know is specifically like who sells me, you know, they, they're specific about what they want and that type of thing is generally used for a Vodazara, right? The white rooster example, like that's a problem. 
So take a look at Tosvos. Tosvos says like this. Tosvos, in the middle of this Tosvos Chatzav, the big Tosvos is talking about what type of grass it is or whatever. Anyway, if you look in the middle, he says, um, the, the line starts with Shmaita, Kasa uh, Rabbeinu uh, Bar. Um, it's like, uh, you see where there's an asterisk in the Gemara, it says, Davodis Kochavim Davram Avinu, the line starts with the asterisk. So you go directly across it in Tosos, he says the following. Kasa Rabbeinu Bar, Rabbi, Kevin the Shardvarim Perusha and Usher, since other things, if they're explicit, they're forbidden. I would actually say, since things that you know are being used are forbidden, even if it's not explicit. Anyway, you cannot sell to a priest of Avodazara, meaning a, a, pre, a Christian priest. Livona, frankincense. That's like being explicit. I don't know why he has to say that. The Mishnah mentions incense, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know why he has to go like, Livona is like it's Mefurish. Livona is one of the things in the Mishnah anyway, but maybe you would think that our, you know, the rituals nowadays are different than the rituals then. But either way, it's clear what they're going to use the incense for. Okay, the Havi Kamo Perushan, it's like being explicit. It's obviously that they're going to use it for some type of an offering, burning incense. The Ove Mishum Lif Neiver, you transgress Lif Neiver. The Gamasur Lim Kor Shava. Now, that's to the priests. You know, maybe other people, they burn this, uh, the incense in their homes just to smell nice. Okay, but for the priest, you know what the con... Oh, maybe that's why he had to say it's kimo, it's explicit. Because a normal person, you can sell incense because people burn incense in their homes just to smell nice. But a priest creates a context in which you know that it's clear that they're buying the incense for this ritual. Okay, and when the context is clear, it is forbidden. And he says it should also therefore be forbidden to sell to anyone, and you know, um, uh, uh, wax. Because what do they use wax for? Uh, be, uh, oh, not in general, but beyond the age. You can't sell them wax on their holidays because then they make these wax candles and they burn it before, you know, the icons, okay, and before the statues. Beyond the age, who? That that is holiday. This must be a anyway. Aval vada bishar yamim. Other days mutar should be permissible, but in days where you know what they're going to be using it for, it should be forbidden. Let's say you have some type of a vessel that was used by one Christian that was used in some type of a worship, but then they you know damaged it, and as a way of saying, like, I'm no longer using this for a ritual purpose. And what you're going to do is you're going to buy it from him and then resell it to another another Christian, you know, and they will be happy to use it for, for that, for like a chalice or something like that. You can't sell it in its current state until you actually melt it down. Just because of a certain type of a, of a dent, they're still going to, that won't stop them from using it as a type of a chalice, which they'll use in their, you know, in their ritual. Now here what becomes interesting is that these types of things, are these actual objects that are being, you know, obviously we're, he's assuming Christianity is a Vodazara, but are these objects of actual offerings? Like you can say incense is an offering. You could say burning candles, right? Is that, doesn't the word votary mean an offering? A vo isn't the word votary mean like a korban? No? I, don't know. I think they have, so. They have votary candles. I understand, because so those are talking it. about wax. So that's what I'm saying. Right, I'm, like right, some right. of these, I think, are types of off, can be understood as types of offerings. But but now he's getting to, now. What, but when you use a, like, a votary, a person such as a monk or nun who has made vows or dedication of religious service, so it's not an offering. Okay, it's like a vow. Anyway, but now we're getting to using like a chalice is a chalice, a, it's a clee that is used, is that considered that the wine, well, I guess if you're using it in the, what do you call it, in the, um, uh, what is that, uh, The what is that that they do, the, uh, uh, with the wafer and the wine, what's that called? Uh, come on, people, Where, where's your knowledge of Christianity? Uh, uh, um, <laughs> this is embarrassing, somebody come over yeah, here. It's when they turn, the, when they, when, yeah, with the bodies, and transubstantiation, trans whatever it is, oh, anyway, no, somebody come anyway. So, is that a type of an offering? I mean, that's in a way even like more challenging. It's not an offering to. It's a tra it's a transferring the physical object into the body and the sac. No, sacrament is generic. Sacrament, like a lot of things are the sacrament. What's that specific sacrament? Anyway, that is that the Eucharist. Thank you. Anyway, that is turning right. So, so that presumably all of those things. Right, so it's interesting. Like that's the question I was raising before. How much is it just that it's used in a ritual, and how much does it have to be seen as a direct, you know, act of an offering to or a direct type of a vodazara? This is treating Christianity as a vodazara, right? So he's he has he has the incense, 
the candles, the chalice used for the wine. But then he says, Now, the word, first of all, what the, what a classic thing that the Gemara does and the Rishonim follow is it changes generic or positive words when dealing with a bodhisattva to derogatory words. It's the opposite of a euphemism. It's called, I think, a dysphemism. F- fancy word. Try to use that in Scrabble. Anyway, um, so when they refer to their house of prayer, and talk, it's rather than calling it based fila, they call it bait tifla. Tifla is like nonsense. Okay, but anyway, so he says selling them books. Now, presumably books means like what? I think it sort of means like Bibles, okay? Selling them Bibles that you have, or, you know, because uh, they'll use like, I don't know, a, a Tehillim or something like that. So, and they're going to use it now in their church. So, um, you can't sell them. Now, maybe you can sell it to a Christian who's just going to use it at home for study, but can you use it in something that's going to be used in their church? You can't even sell it to a Christian who's not a priest because he'll just give it to the church. So now using something as a, you know, as something that they're going to read from, they're going to chant from in the church, they'll read the Psalms, they'll read a passage of the Bible, right? All of these things sound like, the Tosa saying these are not just rituals. These are all things that are done in church. These are acts of worship. These are acts of, and if we consider Christianity of Bodhisattva, these are all acts of a Bodhisattva, okay? So A, this Tosus is very stark in terms of clearly how much it's like using this as like seeing this as straight of Bodhisattva, and then saying you can't sell any of these types of things, right? That you know they're gonna use it. So the question is, how did the him do trade in objects of a Bodhisattva? Sorry, in objects of, excuse me, in, <laughs> in Christian objects of worship. So two basic answers developed. One was beyond the, put the Tosos aside, uh, develop the next stage where we said Christi- Christianity is not a vote are for Christians. So it's not, you know, it's not a vote are for non-Jews. It's only a problem for Jews. So therefore, it's, even though uh, for me it would be completely a vote are, I'm not aiding and abetting them in their forbidden worship because for them it is not a vote are. That's one answer. That's clearly not what this Tosos is seeing. Another answer emerges from the next Mishnah. So let's read the next Mishnah. <laughs> Where they had a practice to sell small animals like sheep and goats to non Jews, you could sell it. When they was not the practice, you could not sell it. Okay, but in any place, whatever the practice was, you don't sell them large animals like cows and horses, or even like calves and foals. So even whether they're young or old, you know, even if they're young and even whether they're whole or even if they're broken, you know, you can't sell them. Rabbi Huda allows a, with a, uh, an animal like a broken leg. Rabbi allows a horse. Now, what is the problem here? The problem here is. Well, different ones. The Gemara is going to say the problem with selling small animals is or do we suspect them of doing acts of bestiality? So when you sell them a small animal, an animal, they'll maybe do an act of bestiality with it. Fine. That's the small animals. What's the problem with the big? That's where there's a debate whether we're concerned about that. What's the big animals? So the Gemara is going to say the big animals is a concern that you won't actually sell it to them. You'll, if we let you sell it, you'll come to lend it to them and it will rent it to them. And if you're renting it to them and they'll use it on Shabbos, then you'll transgress the prohibition of having your animal do work on Shabbos. Now, I have to tell you, we'll get to all of that. But I have, and then that's the question about does it apply to a horse? Does it apply to something with a broken leg that can't really do work on Shabbos? It frames it all as a Shabbos issue. I personally think that the original meaning of this was different. The original meaning of this was likely we saw before about like why you're supposed to be trying to buy animals from them in the marketplace, that it's an issue about the Jewish presence in the land of Israel. So they did not want you selling to, this was specifically a a land of Israel concern, not Jew and non-Jew, whatever. They did not want you selling these things that establish somebody's Mm -hmm. presence, like as, you know, the agricultural presence, the rootedness in the land. So the uh, small sheep, you know, the whatever, you know, the types of, uh, uh, sheep or whatever, they go grazing. That's a nomadic type of a thing. That's not as big of an issue, right? But like the horse, the, the, the cows, you know, that's like the cows are there, you know, that's stable, you use them for plowing, you know, that's more of a sense of a presence in the land. And there's some maybe debate about the horses or whatever. So I think, and we'll see this later, Tosos, we already mentioned the issue a minute ago in the Gemara about selling them actual real estate, right? Oh, what do you mean a tree? You're not allowed to sell them any land, etc. So I see this as specifically about the land of Israel um, and presence in the land, but the, which connects with other things, but the Gemara at least interprets this as a concern of 
either Shabbos concerns at the end or bestiality concerns in the beginning. So let's just read that first line in the beginning, and then I want to show you one line in Tosfos. The Mamer says the Gemara, the Isura Leka, there's no prohibition by selling them these small animals. Minhaga Ika, it's a question of a minhag, the Ika. Hecha Dunai, Yisur Nai, where the, there's a, a custom to have this prohibition of selling small animals, it's in place. Hecha Dunai, Heter Nag, and when it's permissible, it's where it's permissible, it's permissible. For Aminu, I'll ask them that. You can't leave your animal in a like a like a stable. You know, you're going into the inn. Don't leave your animal in the stable of the non-Jews. Because they're suspect of doing acts of bestiality. And you don't want to expose, you know, your animal to them to acts of bestiality is least naive. You don't want it done to your animal. So Amara Amara. So, so that seems like it should always be us. So Amara, Mokam Shitiro he no, they are connected. Where it says you're not allowed to leave a non-Jew alone with your animal, those are in the places where they don't sell small animals to non-Jews. That's where they suspect non-Jews of these types of acts. In the places where they do sell small animals to non-Jews, they don't suspect non-Jews of these types of acts, and you're allowed to leave your animals with the non-Jews. It's all connected. Some places, yes. Some places, no. Rabbi Eliezer, oh man, Rabbi Eliezer says, no, no. There's a difference between selling and leaving your animal alone with a non-Jew. Maybe you can never leave your animal alone with a non-Jew. We suspect them of these things. By the way, this is pretty horrific, you gotta admit, right? To like, this becomes the issue, which I'll get back to. What is the lens that we look at the outside world through? So until now, it's been, okay, they don't do Torah mitzvahs. They do Avodah Zarah, fine. We all know they do Avodah Zarah. Now it's like, you leave them alone with your animal and they're gonna do an act of bestiality, right? I mean, like, you know, that completely like, uh, you know, Obviously, is an act of othering. They significant. See, uh, they see us as drinking blood. Yeah, blood we see them as doing them. acts of bestiality. Right. right. My time. No, if you set, you can sell it because he won't do it to his own animal because he's afraid this act will make his animal, you know, sterile. So he'll do it to your animal. He won't do it to, to his animal. So you could be allowed to sell it. Maybe you could sell it. There are different practices about selling, but it's always forbidden to leave him alone because if it's with your animal. All right, so we'll get back to this tomorrow about this way of looking at these non-Jews as all ready to do these acts of bestiality. Right now, I just want to focus on one thing, which is why should it be forbidden to sell? Uh, what, it's a leaf naive there? But how about the fact that he must have his own animals he could do it with anyway? Like, he doesn't need you. I'm sure he's got his own animals. Why is it leaf naive here? Okay, so you look at Tosvos, very important Tosvos. Tosvos, Mokum Shenogu Shalolim Kor Ein Mochim. Tosvos says, Perish Mishum Chash Revia, because of this concern of bestiality. The other are leaf naive. You'll be transgressed leaf naive. Why doesn't it distinguish between whether he's got such an animal himself or not? Even if he has an animal, it's forbidden. It's a leaf naiver problem. Okay, so so that's the question: Is it a leaf naiver? And then he says, "Well, but it's kasha. Later, we it sounds like earlier." But he says, "I don't get it." Before it sounded like. If the non-Jews ha already have the, an object and they can do the Avera anyway with the object they have, you don't transgress. So why are you transgressing Leif Naiverly if they have their own animal? Okay, so he basically says um, that, uh, that no, you know, whatever, you don't can't, no accounting for people's sexual desire. So maybe he's got his own animal, but, he, but, he, but it's something about your animal that he's particularly lusty for. Anyway, the reason I read this toast, <laughs> I'm sure this <laughs> I'm sure this is taking time for you to absorb this lovely discussion. But anyway, the reason I just want to say the following point, the reason I'm reading this toast is this question of if he has it anyway, do I transgress Leif Naiver, did become an important basis for allowing them to do business with Christian ritual objects. Why? Here I, now, here I am, I'm selling this guy, uh, chalice, candles, whatever I'm selling, frankincense. So if you say I don't transgress Leif Naiver if he already has it, okay, if he already has it, I can sell it to him. Of course, how does that help me? Let's say he doesn't have it. Okay, ah, what if he doesn't have it, but he could easily buy it? 
let's say there's other people that are selling it to him, right? He can just go to the store and buy frankincense. There's a whole frankincense marker, a market. I'm one of 10 frankincense sellers. So if you say you don't transgress leaf the ever when he has it already, it's not a big jump to say that you don't transgress leaf the ever if he can easily access, access it without your help. You got that? So therefore, if I, there, that becomes a heter that I can sell these ritual objects if other people are selling it as well, and therefore he doesn't need me. Of course, the irony becomes, let's say all the other people selling it as well are all Jews. <laughs> we are the four people, the four of us in this room have the entire market of frankincense for the Christians, okay? And we can all do it by the justification that if he's not going to buy it from me, he'll buy it from you. <laughs> But we all decide to do it at the same time. None of us is over our least favorite. It becomes a little ironic, okay? But that does become the other basis in which they they were la they allow they permitted the, that type of a trade. Yeah. And it also just I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. Like why why should PCL 